Real schoolers, it's no secret that I am a huge fan of Joss Whedon. Part of why I love his work is because of the team of actors and especially writers that he surrounds himself with. Drew Goddard, who was originally a writer on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel, both created by Joss Whedon, now brings us his directorial debut, Cabin in the Woods. And you know what? This film has everything that you would expect from a Whedon production. It's got macabre humor mixed with horror, and of course, Joss's impeccable sense of t Now don't think because I'm a Whedon super fan that this entire review is going to be like a grandmother showing videos of her grandson's soccer game. Because while Goddard may have written some of the strongest episodes for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and he starred as fake Thomas Jefferson in the web series Dr. Horrible Sing Along blog, he also brought us Cloverfield. So you're probably wondering why I have a tough time saying <laughs> Cloverfield. When I went to go see Cloverfield, well, it was the day after an evening of um, imbibement. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. So needless to say, I didn't enjoy the film. Couldn't that guy just hold the camera steady? <laughs> so while I had heard a little bit about Cabin in the Woods and I knew who was involved, I wasn't really sure what to expect. What I had heard is that Goddard and Whedon were going to take the American horror genre and flip it on its head. <laughs> what a surprise. I mean, this is from the creative mind that brought us a teenage soap opera monster killing action hour. Or my personal favorite, and I mean this, is a sci-fi space western. And word got out that this film was also a little bit self-satirical. It played with the genre and the rules that exist within it. Much like two of my favorite film franchises, Scream and The Evil Dead. Real schoolers, if you remember my Q&A video, then you'll remember why I got into the film business in the first place. The one film that really inspired me to become a screenwriter and to study film was Scream, the original one, written by the one and only Kevin Williamson. Okay, quick recap. Kevin Williamson, well, he created Dawson's Creek. Later on in his career, created many other hits. But, let's not forget, he also wrote Scream 1, 2, and 4. Okay, some of them weren't that strong. But, the other underappreciated self-satirical horror flick, The Faculty. And The Faculty, like I said, was underappreciated because some of its moments were just as brilliant as the original Scream. Look, how do you know there's not a conspiracy? Look, maybe the X-Files is right. And where do all these movies come from anyway? How do we know Spielberg, Lucas, Sonnenfeld, Emmerich haven't been visited by aliens? You know, maybe they're aliens themselves. Maybe they're simply preparing us for what's to come. You know what, Casey? It's fiction, okay? It's science fiction. Exactly. Everybody gets hung up on the science part, which has nothing to do with it. They're getting at us to the fiction. So aliens have just been setting us up over the years creating this happy little make-believe existence with their their et and their men in black movies just so that nobody would believe it if it really happened i think so so let's see a williamson-esque premise that sparked my creativity and passion for film 15 years ago co-written and produced by arguably one of the greatest creative minds of our generation cabin in the woods did not disappoint it was everything i expected and much much more more importantly, it put the fear back in horror films. Joss Whedon has gone on record as saying that horror films nowadays are not about the fear, they're about the pain. Forget torture porn horror flicks like the Saw sequels or Hostel. Go see Cabin in the Woods. Whedon and Goddard put on a master class of a genre study in terms of horror. They understand that horror and comedy are really not that far apart. It's all about timing. It's about the build-up and then giving you the unexpected. And when I was watching Cabin in the Woods, there were not only some genuinely scary moments where I jumped out of my seat, but I laughed my ass off in some parts. Even if you think you know what to expect, they give you the unexpected. What's not unexpected is it's an earn it. A little less expected? My For the Win, this episode goes to both Whedon, Shocker, and Goddard. What? They work so well together. So that's it, Real Schoolers. I don't want to give away any more than that because the less you know, the better this film is going to be. It's all about the unexpected, like I said. Poll question time. What or who is your favorite horror film movie monster? As always, leave your response to the poll question below in the comments section. Please like, please comment, please do all that fun YouTube stuff. And until next episode, school's out.